Good day, I'm James. And today I'd like to share a method on how to memorize all the digits of pi, all infinitely many of them. Crazy, whoa! But in order to get to that, I need to talk about pi a little bit first and what pi is and an unusual way to get to it. In fact, I want to get to it through a classic wrap a rope around the Earth puzzle. So it goes as follows. Here's the Earth. So let me draw a great big planet, voila. And to show it's the Earth, let me just choose a country at random. I know I'll choose this one. Great, there's the Earth. And this classic puzzle, wrap a rope around the Earth puzzle says, imagine wrapping a rope, well, around the Earth. So let's go around the equator and get a very long length of rope and wrap it around. In fact, that would be a very, very long length of rope indeed. Then the puzzle says, now imagine, you add 10 feet, add 10 feet of length to this rope and then re-wrap it around the equator. Now that can be like a little smidge of space. So I'm gonna assume this like magic rope that can just hover off the ground ever so much and now I'll be a little bit looser with a little bit of space just above the ground. So adding 10 feet to this really large long length of rope gives a tiny, tiny gap. In fact, that's the question. How big is that gap? How high is that rope off the ground? If I say G for gap, how high is that gap? So maybe I can see it better over there. What is the value of that gap G? So I want to work that out because that actually is going to connect us to the value pi as follows. Now the first thing to note is that this is actually not really a three-dimensional problem. If you look at the plane of the equator, it really is just a two-dimensional problem because I've got some rope, now it's a yellow rope, that is some radius of the Earth. Oh, I guess I need to know the radius of the Earth. Mm. Okay, we'll worry about that in a moment. Um, and then we've got the second rope that's 10 feet longer just being above the first set of rope to make a little bit of gap there, G for gap. So we need to work out the height of that gap in that two-dimensional picture. And all we know is that this circumference here, this circumference here is uh, the previous circumference plus 10 feet, so it's plus 10 feet. All right, add 10 feet. All right, I've already alluded to one problem. I don't know the radius of the Earth. I mean, I should get my smartphone to look it up. But let me just get as much math as I can going right now before I need to get the actual numbers. So what we have here, we have, okay, I know the radius of the small circle. I know the radius of the big circle is that radius plus G. And I know the circumference of the biggest circle is 10 feet more than the circumference of the smaller circle. All right, so let me put all that together. The circumference of the big circle, which is 2 pi its radius, so, oh, I'm running out of room, 2 pi its radius, r plus g, is actually 10 more than the circumference of the smaller circle. Oh, it's 2 pi radius, 2 pi r, plus an extra 10 feet. All right, so there is a mathematical translation of adding 10 feet of rope to this particular rope around the equator. And can I get to g? Oh, it looks like I can. It looks like I can. All right, so let me clean the space here. So I don't think I need the picture anymore. Do, 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 do. But I see now, if I expand the first set of brackets, I get 2 pi r plus 2 pi g equals 2 pi r plus 10. So it turns out I don't actually need to know the range of the Earth at all, because now I get that 2 pi g is 10. I see that g is 10 over 2 pi is 5 over pi feet. I guess my units are feet. 5 over pi. Pi is about 3.14. If you work that out and turn it to inches, that is about 19 inches. Whoa, whoa. I am actually dumbfounded by this fact. The gap of adding just 10 feet, tiny amount of length to this rope that goes around the entire equator, gives you a gap that's 19, about that, about that tall, 19 inches tall. I could like wiggle my way underneath that. That's a gap big enough for me to work my way under. Whoa. The other surprising thing is, I did not need to know the radius of the Earth. In fact, it doesn't matter what the radius of the Earth was, it's gonna be 19 inches. Do this for Mars, how big is the gap? 19 inches. Do it for Jupiter, how big is the gap? 19 inches. Do it for the planet the size of a pea, add 10 feet around, how big is the gap? 19 inches. It's 19 inches no matter what. This 19 inches, this five over pi, is a universal invariant about rope wrapping. Crazy, crazy. Ah, but that gets me to pi. Five over pi is that universal invariant. So, so, let me write here, the gap is, gap is five over pi. Because here's what I want to do now in order to get to memorizing the digits of pi. Imagine, imagine that the Earth wasn't actually spherical. Actually, it's obloid, I know that. But suppose it wasn't a basic sphere. No one ever sees it imagine 
cubical planets, for example. So let's imagine the Earth was a cube, and let's actually do the same, same thing. So here's the Earth, here's a randomly chosen planet on the Earth, and here's the Earth's equator. Oops, something like that. Guess I have to, oh, my picture's a little messy. Can you see what I'm doing there? So here's the Earth's equator. So wrap a rope around the Earth's equator. Great, there it is. And then add 10 feet like before and you'll get a little bit of a gap. Now it's a little bit funny at the corners here because the corner has like, you know, different width sizes. But basically it's one overall gap measure, something like out from the surface, how big is that gap? Out from the surface, how big is that gap? That's all the same, all G's, all G's. Corners, we won't worry about corners. All right, so my question is, if I wrap, around, uh, wrap a rope around a cubical Earth, how big a gap G do I get? Let's do it. Now again, hope you have this picture in your mind because I need the space. Um, this is just a two-dimensional problem, so let's actually work that out. Let me just redraw this as a two-dimensional problem. We'll do all the mathematics there. So I had a rope around the cubical Earth, a square, had extra 10 feet, make a slightly bigger rope that hovers above the ground, and this is adding 10 feet. And the question is, how big is that basic gap there? But now it's clear that the corners are a little bit funny, so let's not worry about the corners. The basic gap. All right, how to answer that? Hmm, well, if I look at this picture, I see, oh, where's the new rope? I mean, I can see this section of rope here is the same as that side length of the original square. In fact, this section here is the same as the side length of the original square. This section down here is the same as the original side length. And this section over here is the same as the original side length over yonder. So the new rope is that section, 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 that section. Ah, so let's see, I've got eight new pieces of rope that are all actually the gap G size. G, 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 it sounds like a horse, G, 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 G. Okay, so I see that eight Gs make up for that extra 10 feet. Eight G is the 10 feet, so G is actually five over four feet. 1.25 feet. Whoa, whoa, and look at this. I can imagine, this is kind of what we did before. We have some radius here. Most people don't call this a radius for a square. We added an extra piece G, got an extra bigger square of a bigger radius, and we see that the gap is here five over four feet. For a circle, it was five over pi feet, which makes me think, oh, four. Is four the value of pi for a square? And you know what? I'm gonna say the answer is yes. The value of pi for a square is four. Four. And I'm going to check that as follows. So let me clean the board yet again. All right, so here's the question we're left with. I give you a square and I choose to measure the radius this way. Is the value 4 the right value of pi for a square? And what I mean by right? Well, think about it. What would right be? I want the maths to work out just beautifully. And what maths do I want to happen for the number pi? When you think about the classic formulas that involve the number pi for areas and circumferences of circles, we have th these two classic formulas. That the circumference is 2 pi the radius, and the area is pi radius squared. So, I'm wondering, if 4 is the right value for pi for a square, then these formulas should be right for the value 4 for pi. Are they? Are they? Let's check them. Let's see if this actually has some meaning to it, if it actually seems correct. Here's a square. Here's the radius. I'm doing the short radius, I guess. The apothem, I think, is called sometimes in geometry textbooks. But there's the radius. OK, we go that radius. Using that radius, are these formulas correct? If we use the value 4 for pi. Let's find out. So circumference. Circumference for a square, I guess, means perimeter. I guess the word circumference is special for circles, but circumference, perimeter is all fine. OK, so what's the circumference here? Well, I can see this is two radii, two r's, two r's, two r's, and two r's. OK, so I can see the circumference is eight hours. Let's try this formula. Let's try this formula. If four is correct for pi, I will get two times four times r, which is eight hours, which is correct for c. Yes, c equals two pi r works. Area, area, what's the area of the square? Well, actually you can see it's a, an r squared piece there, an r squared piece there, an r squared piece there, and an r squared piece there. So the area is actually four pi r squareds. 4 pi squared, pi better be 4 for a square, and it is! Pi is 4 for a square, it's all working out. So I have just concluded that the correct value of pi for a square is 4. 
So I can say is pi over four uh, for square question mark or pi for square equal to four question mark yes. Now we're set. That turns out to be a lovely whole number. It's a rational number. And can you memorize the digits of four? Yes, you can. You can memorize infinitely many digits of four. It's 4.0000000000 as long as you like. Because here's the thing. When people say, how many digits of pi do you have you memorized? Most people don't specify which pi they're talking about. So if you want to be obtuse and a little bit clever and smug and all that, you just say, oh, I'm going to assume you're talking about pi for a square, in which case I've memorized all the digits of pi. Oh my goodness. How to be a little bit annoying in mathematics. What I love about this, you actually do this to any regular polygon. Take any polygon that you like, say an equilateral triangle, imagine that's the equator of the Earth, wrap 10 extra feet of rope around it and figure out the gap size. 5 over some number is the gap size, and that number on the bottom is the value of pi. Do it for an equilateral triangle, you get 5.20 roughly. For a square, you get 4 on the nose. For a regular pentagon, 3.63, 3.46, 3.37, and so on and so on and so on. And in fact, as you do more and more sides, of course these shapes look more and more circle-like, and the values for pi you get approach closer and closer to the value 3.141592 and so on. Absolutely lovely. And what I love about these values is that they're the values, the correct values of pi, that make the classic formulas work under one caveat, that you're actually assuming that you're working with the short radius. The radius goes from the center to the side, uh, to the middle of the side of the polygon. Always the short radius, always the short radius, always the short radius, always the short radius. It matches the gap size and it makes these classic formulas for pi work. The short radius is the way to go. The reason I mention that, because it is very tempting to actually go with the long radius sometimes, from the center out to a corner. In which case, if you use that long radius, you'll get pi values that aren't very helpful because the classic formulas no longer work. It's the short radius that goes. The reason I mention that is because if I take a decagon, a 10-valued side uh, shape, you get that pi is about 3.25. And it's not 3.09, as NASA just recently said. So of course, if you look at the solar panel array of the Lucy mission craft, your eye just naturally goes to these long radii, which is great. And of course, you can use that diameter and that circumference and get an approximate value of pi of 3.09. Grand, but it's not a pi value that actually makes these formulas actually still work. It really has to be the short radii. So I'm going to argue that actually it's the short radii you have to go with. That's the correct value of pi to play with for um, a regular decagon. In fact, for a regular n-gon, you can see that the general value for pi is going to be this formula, if you want a little trigonometry challenge, try it out, and voila, in which case pi for a decagon is actually about 3.25. So Lucy Mission, I think you're fine, you can still wait to celebrate pi day, it's going to come a little bit later on, great, let's have a big party for it on March 25th. Alright, so I'll see you for the NASA Pi Day Mission celebrations later in March. <laughs>